is Joe Tortonesi. Uh, welcome to my show, Joe's Drum Shop. And today we're actually going to be uh, talking about the last and playing the last song in the book called Great Balls of Fire uh, for Drums One. And this is Songbook One. And later on, after this one, we're going to be getting into Drums uh, One, Songbook Two. And that is going to be a different song, which is going to be by a really cool band, Santana. And it's got a little Latin flavor to it. Uh, but let's first, let's do this one. This is by the uh, late, great Jerry Lee Lewis. And this came out in like 57. And uh, it's a pretty easy song. Uh, the only problem is it's really fast. So I'm going to probably, you know, as I'm playing this and playing the parts and everything, I'm going to get this really kind of uh, down slow, as you can see. So that way you can see all the parts. And then we'll put it together and I'll play it up to speed and uh, we'll play along with the song, okay? All right, so the first part, it starts off with, of course, the piano. Uh, the piano part's gonna start, and the drums will come in with a snare drum and a floor tom. And it kind of does little choppy notes like one, two, three, and four, and one, okay? Then the next step would be to play the bass drum, which I'm gonna be playing one, two, three, four, five, six bass drums. And then that tom pattern with the snare again will come in again. So it's kind of like this. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. 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 So that's the intro. And that's going to go right into the first verse. And the beat's a very basic beat. It's, a, it's something that they used to use in the 50s quite often, where the bass drum was on one and three, snare drum's on two and four. Uh, instead of the hi-hat, though, they actually are going to use the ride cymbal. So pretty much through this whole song, uh, the ride cymbal plays throughout. We don't have to go to the hi-hat, so I'll be using just the ride and not the hi-hat. Um, okay, so let's keep going. So as I play through this, um, it's going to have like a... Every so often, it'll have a double snare. So you might hear this, you might hear. Okay, so it'll have that kind of a feel to it. And then it'll have little uh, fills here and there, which we're going to get to those in just a minute here. But again, it does a lot of starting and stopping, and that's what makes this song really kind of stand out. Uh, and, and very catchy, you know. Um, so on the next part of this, let's see, uh, would be we keep playing that part that I was showing you with the double snare. And then we get to this, uh, the fourth line, the last measure, we're going to crash. And then it's going to do three snares, and that's where, when we're going to do the snare and the floor time again, kind of like the intro. So almost like the intro comes back again right in the middle of the song. And uh, so here's how this one's going to go. So it'll be like... So then the next step is we're going to add some snare drum to it, and it's just these little pops on two and four, so it's like one, two, three, four, one, two, and then it stares the snare again, then a snare once more, and then we do flams on the snare, so the flams will be, and then it'll switch to the ride cymbal. And you're going to be doing ride cymbal and snare with the bass between. And then it goes back to the beat. Now here's a cool fill. It does a bass snare, bass snare halfway through the measure. So you get this. Okay, I'll do that one more time. Two, ready, go. All 
right. And then at the last part of the song, we have a first ending and a second ending. The first ending is going to get ready to come back to the intro again. We're going to do the intro one more time. And it starts at ending one. After you do that crash, you're going to come back to the floor time and snare. Play that. And then we go right back to uh, page one at the very top. Not the first measure, but the second measure because of that double bar, double dot. So that's where we have to join those two together. And then we go back and we play this whole thing that I just mentioned, everything we did uh, up to date here so far. We played that all the way through. We go through the second page again exactly the same way. When we get to the end of the song, we're going to do the last line and the first measure on the last line. We're going to jump over ending one, and we're going to go to ending two, which will sound like this. So it'll sound like with the crash, one, two, three, and four, and, and then crash, okay? All right, so let's try this out, and I'll put this up to full speed, and let's give it a whirl. <clears throat> Here we go. a few more crashes where I feel like I, I like to add those in because it uh, just makes it more interesting for me. So if you might see some extra crashes on there, don't worry. It's just me throwing in a little bit extra. Um, you don't have to put those there. Like I said, it's in, important to kind of make it kind of your own. You don't always have to go follow everything note per note unless you're doing a recording or somebody specifically says, hey, I want you to do it exactly like it's written. Don't add anything extra. Then, of course, you definitely would want to do that. All right, let's take a look at the next song here. And again, this will be Drums 1, Songbook 2. Let me show you the, uh, there it is here. And this has really some, a little more of the songs are a little bit more intricate. So that's because, you know, as we get going here, they're going to, make things a little bit trickier. But again, I'm going to be walking you through everything here, getting it nice and easy so you understand it. And then when you see it up to full speed, you just take your time and you get it down, okay? All right, let's take a look at this one. This is called Easy uh, Evil Ways. This is by Santana. Now, this actually has four pages, and I'm going to try to get these uh, up all at the same time. Now... Usually when I'm teaching drum lessons, it's very hard uh, for students because we have to turn the page in the book here while playing sometimes. So I usually tell them, let me see if I can get this. I usually tell them to make copies of it, and that's what I'm doing here. Is I'm, I made copies 
of the uh, song so that you don't have to turn the pages. Again, it's, it, it's important when you're playing in front of people, too, that you actually kind of memorize this stuff eventually. But for the time being, since we're, you know, we're talking about this and the notes and everything, it's important to have everything out for you. And that way, when I'm playing, I don't have to stop and turn the page, you know. Of course, like some piano players, sometimes you see professional piano players, they'll have a person that actually turns the page for them when they're playing in a concert. But for drummers and stuff, we try to <laughs> keep, if your memory's sharp, we got to make sure that your memory's sharp so that you can play this stuff and keep it in there. And how do you do that? A lot of students ask me, how do you memorize all this stuff? Well, you just have to do it a lot, a lot, a lot. There's a lot of practice involved. And when you do make mistakes, it's not a big deal. You can't get yourself upset. You really just got to focus on what you're doing and go over the parts that you're having problems with. And that's one of the things that's hard to practice. A lot of times, because we're human, we, you know, sometimes we'll have it where, you know, we make a mistake and we get mad at ourselves. Like, why did I make that mistake? And our emotions get in the way. And that's something that is really bad for practicing as, you know, as an instrument goes. It doesn't have to be just drums. It could be, you know, guitar or, uh, you know, piano or whatever. You know, you're, you're going through the song and you make a mistake. Well, Work on the mistake, get that down first, and then go back over the whole song again. Sometimes, you know, when I was uh, young and practicing myself, I would make that mistake of, like, I made a mistake, and then I wanted to go back and do the whole thing again, figuring I'm going to do it again. But I didn't work on the mistake. So what I had to do is I had to get that mistake down first and then go back and then go through. And a lot of times I would get through the problem. So it was a, a better way to practice. And it's, it's, you know, nobody teaches you how to practice. You can't just go to a drum lesson and have the teacher explain to you how to practice. Um, that's something some, we all have to kind of figure out on our own what works best for somebody might not be the best for me or some, some stuff that I work on myself that I work on that's kind of hard or whatever. You know, a lot of people figure that might not be the way for them. So, again, it's different for everybody. Um, so let's talk about this. This is called Evil Ways. Now, let me explain something with this song. Uh, Santana has multi-percussionists. There's, uh, of course, a drum set player, and then they have a conga player, they have a bongo player, they have uh, a timbali player. A timbales are kind of like a snare drum without the, the wires on the bottom. They don't have any bottom head either, so that when you hit them, they kind of make a real metallic sound to them. And they'll have like a cowbell connected and a cymbal. And then the other guy plays the congas, the other guy playing bongos. And so when you add all of that stuff together, it really sounds fabulous because it's all different rhythms coming from different parts of, you know, different people playing. Now, I don't have that luxury of having all the percussionists. So what happens is when I'm playing the song, I'm kind of incorporating, and this is what they do with the music, they incorporated the percussion stuff within the song for the drummer to play a little bit of this and a little bit of that. So the very first part of this uh, starts off with actually a timbali. And the timbales are actually about a 15-inch and a 14-inch uh, drum, again, without bottom heads. They're made of metal, sometimes copper um, or brass. So uh, it depends on the, the model and, and the brand and everything. But anyway, it starts off like that, and then it goes into the drum set part. So I'm really kind of doing two parts all in one. In fact, uh, a lot of the fills and things that we're going to talk about here, and there's a lot to cover because this is a four-page song. So there's a lot going on, and there's a few repeats. There's a first ending, a second ending. Um, so a lot going on with the song. And again, this is the first song out of the book of uh, the songbook, too. But let's take a look at it right now. In the first measure, this is the intro. The actual drums start the, the song out. Uh, it's at, uh, it says modern, moderate Latin. Uh, the quarter note equals 122. And uh, the first beat is 16th notes on the, like I said, it would be on the timbales. But we're going to do, I'm going to pretend that the timbales are these toms here. Okay, so it starts off with six notes, six sixteenth notes, on the first timbali. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six. 
And then the second timbali is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we've got six and nine. Now you don't count it like that, but I'm just counting how many times I'm actually playing each drum and how many times they get hit. Then I go into a crash and I start the beat. And again, this starts off with hi-hat. But I'll start it again. So listen to, here's how it starts. And then we go crash. Now, the Latin beat, a lot of times in Latin songs, is what they call like a bassa or sometimes a samba. And it's usually getting the bass drum and the hi-hat to play. Now, I'm not going to be using the hi-hat for this song, but a lot of times you'll hear a samba start off like this. And it'll have the ride cymbal playing along with it. And then they might add a rim shot. So you get like a cross stick, wood stick style rim shot, like that. And this is kind of to represent a uh, clave. And claves were kind of like these uh, real hard wooden sticks that would clink together and they would make like a little, you know, kind of a, a wooden sound to them. And so if I added that together with it, I would get kind of a bossa nova. This is more of a bossa nova pattern, but listen, here's what it sounds like. So that's kind of the beat that's kind of going on here, and it gives you that kind of that uh, feel of that Latin pattern. But the way they do it here is they don't open the hi-hat up. They're going to play just hi-hat, bass, and snare, and you'll get this kind of a pattern. One, two, ready, go. Okay, so that's the feel of it. And again, we have to play that two measure combination feel because that's what the music is doing, okay? It's doing a two measure kind of uh, Latin pattern along with the drums, okay? All right, so the next part, um, there's some crashes there. The big fill at the beginning here on line three, the last measure, this is right when the words come in, when the lyrics come in and it says, you got to change your evil ways. And that's going to be like this. It's going to be... I'll play the measure before it. Okay, let's do that again one more time. Okay. Uh, the next part, right when they start singing, that kind of that clave part or that rim shot or a cross stick, whatever you want to call it, that part comes in and we start playing real kind of a, a subtle, soft paddle pattern with this as it's playing. So it'll be like... So I'm going to break that down a little bit. I played through it a little bit, but let's try it slow. So the first part, as we play this, um, you notice I played that double measure pattern, and then I put these little crashes in, and usually there's like a splash symbol. Now I don't have a splash, so I'm going to pretend this first crash symbol is like a splash. And you notice sometimes it goes with the rim, and sometimes it goes between the rim, okay? So let's... Play that slowly again. Uh, I'll start on the third line, and that's going to sound like this. So I'm on page five, and it's line three. So it's going to sound like this.
then the fill comes in with snare drum and floor tom. And then you do six snare drums. And then four floor toms. And then snare three toms. Four toms on the next one. And then back to the snare drum. And then we go back to ending one. And it starts us back again, getting ready for the next verse. Okay? So let's go and uh, we'll start on the second ending now. So let's say we've got the first one done. The second ending is going to start like this. Uh, it's going to go into a ride cymbal. And you're going to do this. Now, oh, one other thing is we've got a coda. And that coda, as it's playing, uh, on page five, line three at the end, the last measure, it's going to go to that. When we get down to page four, page four is on, uh, I forgot what page this is on. Let's see, it's um, five, six, seven. So on page seven, this is going to have a whole fill uh, set up, and it's going to go to this thing called the DSL coda. Now, remember... The DSL coda means to look for the fancy S and then look for the coda. Now, when we get to, like I said, page 7, on DSL coda, we're going to go back to page 4 because right next to letter B is that fancy S, and that's where it's going to start again. And we're going to play through, and we're not doing the coda yet, but until we see that DSL coda, that's when you're going to switch to the coda, and that's going to be on the last page, okay? So let's talk about uh, the second ending, um, right? Let's see, where's the second ending? So basically on page six, uh, we're going to be playing this fill now. And we're doing the ride cymbal, so it's going to crash. And then we're going to play another beat. And it's going to be have the snare on all, uh, well, actually, not all four, but all three, uh, actually on number two, three, and four. So you're going to do like this. One, two, and three, and four, and, and two, and three, and four, and up. And then we're going to crash, uh, stay on the ride. And then we're going to crash coming up here pretty soon. Again, there's a lot to this. Um, we're actually looking at the last page now, and we're getting ready to come up to that first DSL coda. So um, right there, you're going to crash on one, and then you're still doing the continuing the beat. So it's two and three, four and one, and then you're going to do that fill again. Now, right there, after we get done with that, that's the DSO coda. We're going to come back to letter B and play that whole section again. And then when we get up to uh, page 5, the third line, we're going to see that two coda sign. Now, I'm not going to go back over all of this again because I'm going to play the whole song. But when we get up to coda, we're going to drop down to where it says coda, and then we finish up the song. Okay? You'll see coda is on the last page, and it has a little... Uh, crosshairs, I guess you could say, and then it says the word coda. And we're going to play that, and let's do these fills right here. So uh, this is going to be right at the coda. One, two, three, four, one, and two,
So that's the song, but I'm going to go back over what we just covered here. So a lot of fills going on. As you can see, I'm doing stuff with my left stick while I'm still playing the ride cymbal. Um, so we're at letter D. I'm sorry, letter, uh, yeah, no, that's D. It's called the outro guitar solo section. So when the guitar is playing, this is kind of the drum part underneath that. So I'm going to play it again. Uh, we're, at the, we're on the ride cymbal. And right at the coda sign, you'll see it says, yeah, yeah, yeah. We go down to the second line where letter D is, and that's the outro guitar solo. That's going to sound like this. It's going to crash, and the beat is going to play with kind of like the ride cymbal and the tom between each other. So we're going to sound like this. Two, ready, go. Now that plays that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times, and then we end it with these last two measures, which is a very kind of intricate little uh, drum fill. And the way it starts is it's we're on the um, still on the ride cymbal, so we're gonna go one and two, a three and a four and a one, and then we crash again two and a. Three. Rest on four, and then we've got the last measure going crash, crash with the bass, which is on beats one and two, okay? Okay, so that pretty much in a nutshell, I know there's a lot. Like I said, this is a lot. This is a big song. I don't know why they put this one, the very first song, out of the book, because it should have been like the last one, because the last song usually is the hardest in, in a lot of books, a lot of drum books. So, but they put this one first all of a sudden, and usually what I do for drum students, if they're starting off with this book, I usually get them into the second song, which we're going to be doing on the next show, but for right now, I figured I'll just do this in, you know, linear, and we'll just make sure we're doing each song one by one. All right, let's take a look at the song right now from beginning to end. I'll play it up to full speed. Again, the tempo is 122 beats per minute. And let's check it out.
like to thank you for coming and checking out the Joe Drums shop. And uh, until then, we'll have a blast next time we see you. And until then, you guys take care. Keep rocking. This is Joe Drums signing off. Have a good one.